Our top story with authorities halting fishing activities, deploying rescue personnel and announcing evacuation plans for those at risk. India and Pakistan are bracing for the first severe cyclone, Bipor Joy. As per Indian Meteorological Department, the cyclone is expected to hit coastal regions on the 15th of June, which is tomorrow. From the Arabian Sea, Cyclone Bipor Joy is aiming at Pakistan's southern Sindh province and the coastline of the Indian state of Gujarat. It is forecast to make landfall on Thursday and could reach maximum wind speed of up to 150 kilometers per hour. Meanwhile, IMD has said that this cyclone has an extensive damaging potential and it is likely to impact Kutch, Devabhumi Dwaraka and the Jamnagar districts of Gujarat the maximum. However, as the storm progresses towards Kutch, it is expected that the wind intensity will gradually decrease. Further, the Indian Weather Department informed that Cyclone Bipor Joy is now completely detached from the monsoonal flow and will not adversely impact the advance of the rain-bearing system or its performance. Triggered by Cyclone Bipor Joy, Maharashtra's Mumbai recorded a sharp drop in minimum temperature on Tuesday. The city also experienced moderate rainfall even this morning. According to latest updates, authorities on Tuesday shifted at least 30,000 people from Gujarat's coastal areas to temporary shelters. And the Western Railways cancelled at least 67 trains passing through the areas predicted to be affected by the weather conditions due to the cyclone. Teams of the NDRF have been deployed across Gujarat. The wind earlier was flowing with the speed of 20 to 30 km per hour. But now the speed of wind has increased to 50 km per hour. The NDRF has evacuated people living near the coastal areas of Gujarat and have been brought the safe distance. Union Home Minister Amit Shah on Tuesday chaired a review meeting on the preparedness for the cyclone. Gujarat Chief Minister along with eight MPs virtually participated in the meeting. As per an official release, Amit Shah said that teams of the Indian Army, the Indian Air Force and the Indian Coast Guard have been kept ready to provide help. Amit Shah also suggested that owing to the cyclone, there is the possibility of at least 8 to 10 inches of rain that can lead to flooding in Kutch and the Saurashtra regions. He also instructed officials to make necessary preparations around the Somnath and the Dwarka temples, citing an instruction from Prime Minister Modi. Amit Shah stressed the safety of wildlife in the forests of Gir should also be ensured. According to various climate experts, tropical cyclones in the Arabian Sea, like this one, have become more frequent the past couple of decades because of warming sea surface temperatures in the region, enhanced of course, by a warming climate. All right, uh, let's uh, take this uh, to our correspondent who is joining us from Mumbai. Disha Shah is there in the financial capital of India. Also, we are being joined by the former DG of National Disaster Response Force, O.P. Singh. Thanks very much for speaking to us. Disha, let me come to you first. What is the forecast for India's financial capital looking like? Any advisories issued for the people of the city and the coastal region of the state of Maharashtra? Well, uh, as far as India's financial capital city, Mumbai, is concerned, uh, yes, uh, the cyclone Bipper Joy did uh, pass, uh, you know, through outside of uh, Mumbai on Monday morning, which really saw very rough sea condition. And we also saw the impact on the ground level of high uh, waves uh, and the strong wind speed as well. But today, if you see, uh, I'm here at Juhu Beach, which is one of the popular, uh, you know, beaches here in Mumbai. And the cyclone Bipajoy effect was such earlier this week that 
four young boys drowned inside uh, this particular beach uh, due to the strong high tide waves and the wind speed as well. And keeping in mind this particular situation, most of the beaches here in India's financial capital city, Mumbai, will be shut till 17th of June. Here you can see this is the spot which is always buzzing with people, but now it has been shut for visitors till 17th of June because of the strong, uh, you know, sea condition, the rough sea condition. As you can see, there's a police presence as well, uh, you know, uh, not allowing visitors to really come close to the shore or to enter the beach. We are also seeing uh, the lifeguard, uh, you know, boys being ready here to man any sort of situation which goes wrong so this is as far as you know uh, the situation of Mumbai is concerned and as far as Maharashtra's coast is concerned there has been no uh, you know dangerous alert as such because the cyclone Bipajoy is not going to make a landfall here uh, but it is going to make, likely make a landfall in Gujarat so but there are rescue teams that have been put on standbys especially at the coast areas of Maharashtra. Disha, uh, stay with us. Uh, let's uh, get uh, O.P. Singh also into this conversation. Mr. Singh, you know, this is a very severe cyclonic storm. What kind of damage is expected when that cyclone makes landfall tomorrow? What should people, particularly in the path of that cyclone in the ra and in the larger, you know, what is called the cone of uncertainty, what should the people in that region do? Look, uh, this particular cyclone, which has been categorized as a very severe cyclone, has already started hitting the normal life even before the landfall tomorrow, day after tomorrow, or perhaps tomorrow, on 15. Uh, you know, the, the 30, more than 30,000 people have been evacuated from the coastal areas for safer reasons. And they ha I have heard the reports that there has been some slight of reluctance on the part of the people not to leave their livestock as well as their belongings. So that's a great challenge for the local authorities. But at the same time, all precautions are being taken either by the Maharashtra the government or by Gujarat government. As you all know that the Shaurashtra and Kutch regions are going to be very much impacted on this. And uh, as per the IMD report, this particular cyclone has a lot of the, uh, destructive potential. And uh, in every cyclone, uh, in the past, as well as we have seen it, that, you know, you have a very, very destructive wind, you have storm surge, and at the same time, you have exceptional rainfall occurrences. And this is what we are witnessing right now. The wind speed is very much, and it's likely to, when it's likely to hit the uh, land, then perhaps it will be between 150 kilometers per hour to 180 kilometers per hour. But the greater challenges for the local authorities, particularly for the NDRF teams, which have been scattered all over the affected places, would be how quickly we restore the place. You know, that's the, and that is why the government has already kept Army, Indian Coast Guard, Navy, and all that on standby, yes. because all these agencies will have to coordinate with each other and will try to restore the existing positions, particularly the infrastructure, clearing yes. of roads, leading to the hospitals, to primary health centers, and so many things. So I think uh, it's going to be a big challenge and the potential damage has already started. The, the, the fact that 30,000, more than 30,000 people have been evacuated, the fact that a lot of trains have been suspended, the air connectivity is almost come to ground all. And, and perhaps the aim of the government is to ensure zero casualty and max, minimum uh, potential damage. So all these things are being looked into. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, with the, with the a meeting that happened yesterday, uh, yes. um, chaired by the Union Home Minister. They have the, 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 the meeting must have taken stock of everything. So this is the ground scenario. Uh, right. Uh, so ensuring zero casualties, that should be the aim. Uh, Disha, what is the state of preparedness in Gujarat where the cyclone will be making landfall tomorrow? That is right. Till about today morning, there was an orange alert issued for the districts like Kutch and Saurashtra region by the IMD. But just few hours ago, we've got an update that now a red alert has been issued. So keeping that in mind, the preparedness is going on in a full speedy manner is what we are learning from the Gujarat government officials. Total 35,000 plus people have been evacuated within the 10 kilometers of the coastal lines of the districts that are going 
to be likely going to be affected tomorrow. Uh, what we are given to understand, there are eight such districts in Gujarat that the IMD has warned of. In fact, the IMD in its latest prediction has also warned of floods, power outage and many other, uh, uh, you know, development that can take place on the ground level. So for that, the number of rescue teams have also been increased after the red alert has been issued. Earlier, there were about 12 NDRF teams deployed in these districts. Uh, but now the, the total number of teams have gone up to 17. There are going to be 12 SDRF teams that have been deployed and put on standby for the rescue and relief operations. The fishing activities, like you uh, earlier pointed out, have uh, been suspended through the week. The schools and colleges have been shut more than 70 trains have been cancelled which really run through the route of Gujarat uh, from any part of uh, the other state. So these are the preparedness that the Gujarat government officials, in fact, just uh, as we were talking, uh, we also got an update that how helpline numbers have also been launched by the Gujarat government in, the, in all the 33 districts of Gujarat. So uh, people who are living in those vulnerable areas, they can also reach out for help, for aid. There are are more than 30,000, uh, you know, uh, shelter homes and makeshift uh, homes that have been built far off from the coastlines. Uh, so all of these are the efforts that the Gujarat government officials say that they are planning to do uh, because now they are just one day away from the predicted landfall that the IMD has really forecasted. All right. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Disha, for that update. Keep uh, tracking those developments for us. Uh, Mr. Singh, uh, you have been the former DG of NDRF. You have supervised operations like these in your tenure. Now, there is a storm surge warning also for Kutch, Dev Bhumi, Dwarka, Porbandar, Jamnagar and Morbi districts. The IMD is saying that these astronomical tides along these districts could be up to three to six meters in different places. Tell us about uh, what damage could these potentially do? And I also want to understand from you, as a former DG of NDRF, what are the rescue team strategies pre and post this to mitigate the damage of such natural calamities? Uh, well, you know, let me, let me tell you one thing, that if you go back to 1999, the super cyclone of Urisa, which had killed almost 10,000 people, at that time we didn't have any institutions and legislations in our place. But for the last 10 to 15 years, India has been able to place the legislations, policies, and, and programs in place. And that is why you have so many institutions coming up. Now we are much, much better in terms of our early warning system. We are much better in risk identifications and rehabilitations. And if you look at the entire preparedness stage, of by, either by NDRF or by Army or by Indian Coast Guard, you'd see that there has been always a long-term planning by way of which you try to implement those plannings. You go for operationally pasting all those plannings, and then you have the simulation exercises, pre-season coordination meetings with the state government, with the government of India. You have the contingency plans, and you have also the community-based training. So today we are in a much, much better position, and that is why IMD can pinpoint the exact landfall where the landfall is going to take place. I mean, the early warning system is very good. Now, looking at the potential threat, naturally, if you have a landfall, and, and since this has been a categorized, categorized as super cyclone, super severe cyclone, so you can see the speed of the wind. The speed of the wind could be anything up above 150 kilometers per hour. In super cyclone, it was more than 200. So anything having a wind speed of that magnitude will certainly be more, much more dangerous, much more potentially damaging and afflicting a lot of uh, damage to the people, populations, as well as to the property and material. So we expect that all those coastal areas, eight districts of Gujarat and some of the districts, some of the districts of Maharashtra, from Sauras to Kutch, you know, these are the most vulnerable people. And that is why the people living in the coastal areas, the fishermen, the trains, buses, air connectivity, all these have been suspended and the people have been evacuated to the shelter homes. So the government, IMD and all those local authorities, they expect potential damage to the people as well as to the uh, to the property. And that is why we say that our aim would be to have a zero casualties and minimum damage to this. And since we have had been battling all kinds of cyclones since 1999, we have enough, you know, if you if you talk about the NDRF. Right. NDRF is a very, very specialized premier force. 
and they know how to strategize their post. They not only go for the pre-disaster scenario, but they also do a lot of work in the post scenario. For example, clearing of the roads. They have the heavy equipment by way of they try to clear the trees because trees are also uh, strewn over all over the uh, roads and all that. So the, the restoration is a big problem and that perhaps and the provision of medicines, provision of food, provision of water, uh, the, the shelter homes had need to be equipped with all these. So all these things are being looked after and the NDRF is quite capable and uh, quite resourceful in doing so. And that should right. be the strategy for any local authority as well as for the rescue teams. All right. So a number of uh, SDRF and NDRF teams have been deployed on the ground there. The helpline numbers have now been issued by the Gujarat government. The aim, as Mr. O.P. Singh was saying, should be zero casualties and minimum damage. We hope that happens. O.P. Singh, thanks very much for joining us on this story with your perspective. Thank you.